And that was what the lesson of the film was to me. But having made that, and not having reached the state that Jake reached, the character reached in the movie, I was still left up here. You see, I was left on an emotional, intellectual, crazed high, in a way. And I just was coll I collapsed by the time the picture was released in Europe. I, I had pneumonia, and I uh, uh, was quite tired. So uh, then we had to start shooting King of Comedy faster than because of the Director's Guild, imminent, the imminent strike in the Director's Guild. And, uh, you know... It, just, it, was a, was, it became a became a chore. It should never be. It's it's uh, sh production is bad enough. <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying. Production is bad enough. You got cameras. You got people. You got. You should never be that. You should never find yourself on a set saying, "Geez, why, why am I here?" You know. Sorry, I don't mean to disturb you. I don't want to take up any of your time. I just want to talk to you for a minute. I just need you to Hey, this is not the time. If, if we could just drive away, I'll, I'll, you can drop me off anywhere. If I could just talk to you, I would drive. I'm drive away? No, if, I have a very strict no. rule about people getting in the car. I don't think you yourself, Mr. Langford. I don't mean to be rude, but I did put myself in the line for you. Go ahead, Bobby. Hit it. Originally, I didn't like this script. I uh, thought it was just a one-line gag. I didn't understand it. But then after having made a few pictures and reaching a certain kind of success with some of the movies and having gone, having been on both sides of that issue, having been somewhat of Rupert and also Jerry a little bit, I began to see both. Jerry, I've sketched out this little outline in order to save you a little bit of time, okay? It's a little introduction. So close your eyes and imagine it's exactly 6 o'clock, you're standing in the wings, and we hear Lou Brown and the orchestra strike up your theme song. <laughs> From New York, it's the Jerry Langford Show, with Jerry's guests, Richard Pryor, Ben Gazzana, Elizabeth Ashley, Carol Burnett, and the comedy find of the year, making his television debut, Rupert Pupkin, the new Rupert. king of comedy. Rupert! I oh, am crazy! Say hello to with you! you. Yeah, ah, man! So sleeping. Lower it! Oh. Did you see, uh... Uh, King of Comedy? Yes. Well, the lady that, that you hear her voice, but you don't see her, that's me. When I says, Rupert, what are you doing down there? That's me. What's the matter with you? Mom! Take it easy. Lower it. I don't I'm not going to lower it. I have to do this now. I don't mind you playing it, but lower it. Are you beginning to get the feeling that it's no longer a question of budget, but that he wants you in his films? That's what it was. Yeah. So he says you got it. Along he but he used to, to tell me you got to get in. There's no he, money. He, he's a tricky. And trick, he though. used to tell me. He used to tell me you and your son. So will you please give your warmest greetings to the newest king of comedy, Rupert Pupkin. <laughs> very interesting to direct but I had to keep reinventing my caring for the picture and I found it to be dangerous and uh dangerous in what sense well imagine making a picture and you don't care about it what's it going to look like I think for Marty uh King of Comedy had been a very tough experience and then he had gone through the experience of wanting so badly to make Last Temptation of Christ and it coming almost to fruition and not happening I think he was very uh, depressed about his life as a filmmaker. I think he was really questioning it probably for the first time in his life. Is, is this what I should do? Is this what I can do? When they pulled the plug on uh, four weeks before shooting of Last Temptation of Christ, when Paramount had to pull out, um, I learned a great deal. I learned that I had to go back and start making pictures um, for a certain amount of money. And that's why I came across the script of After Hours um, and uh, made it for four and a half million dollars all in. has, like all of us, in a way, has joined the establishment. Although Marty, rather than joining the establishment, has, has rather had the establishment join him. And people go to Marty to make Marty's movies. Marty doesn't have to come begging to anybody. I mean, Mar everybody wants to make movies with Marty. The studios like his films, love his films, as we all do, and, and they, they seek him out. Hmm. This 
smell what I smell. Smoke? Money. Let's take a stroll around, see what's what. It was a lot of fun working with Paul Newman and Tom Cruise and Mary Elizabeth and all that, and Helen Shaver, and we had a great time. And uh, especially the camera uh, moves. We had a great time with the camera moves, uh, and the tracking shots, and the cutting. Uh, the, the look, and that kind of an elegant look we try to get of a uh, sliding camera. start with a white shot but you see these guys playing and they're great and the camera slowly comes in and on the end he wanted a shot where you see a close-up of Paul and the, the pool balls in front of his face going back and forth now he was sitting a little higher on bleachers Paul if you go lower with the camera you don't see the balls anymore so I had to come up with an idea uh, to make that work and what I finally did was I had the pool table on a dolly and while we were tracking in the pool table slowly moved up to the height of his face and by the time the camera arrived the pool table was at the height of Paul's face and you saw the balls in the foreground and his face in the background. that was a graduation to uh, a movie a real studio film because after hours was independent but to do a real studio film with the movie stars um, on budget on time and to uh, uh, an attempt to make a mainstream picture that would uh, not intentionally I didn't do this intentionally but after after I finished it, I realized it showed people uh, certain key people in Hollywood that uh, that I can make pictures that uh, at least uh, if not necessarily making a lot of money across the board, when our opponents release, at least we'll finish on schedule. Okay, ready. Let's ready. go. Clear Sorry, ready. Clear ready. And roll it. Roll him out of the frame. Sorry, guys. Sorry, we got to go. Rolling. Yesterday, we did Lazarus raising, but we finished him this morning. Uh, um, just don't, I wish I had more energy for these things. I could actually make a very nice little, a very nice little, uh, a diary of making the film, but it's almost impossible. He and, uh, still has the vulnerability he always had, and which I appreciate. I work with a lot of directors who feel like they have to act like they're in control and that they know. And Marty says. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if this is going to be any good. I don't know if I'm going to be excommunicated. I don't know if God wants me to do this film. And he means it. And it relieves me. That's all I can say. It makes me trust him. We cannot permit this movie to be shown in the United States or anywhere in the world. This sort of thing is going to happen to the movie screen. If that movie is allowed to go in movie houses, that the state of California is going to fall in the ocean. Making a good profit. Fair. I, 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 I personally didn't want him to make it because I was we afraid. We didn't want him to. We were afraid. I was afraid because when, when it comes to the religion, and politics is two bad things to, to get involved into. Mm -hmm. But he says, Dad, I'm not going to offend God in any way. Which he didn't. But they took it up that way. I don't know why. Marty really understood and tried to present what Christ has suffered and what sin meant. Marty has a strong sense of the reality of sin. I don't know if he realizes it. And it hit me as I watched that, that he does. Again, 
Catholics may be almost overly, you know, whacked about this. But sin is a very strong reality for us. Uh, and his presentation of the crucifixion was incredible. I actually did the film thinking I would get closer to the concepts of, of, of what Jesus talked about. It was it blasphemous or wasn't it? Of course, I contend it wasn't. Others contend it was. People don't know me. Naturally, they're going to think it's, I'm doing it to raise, get some money. You know, the picture's going to make money, and I'm going to take advantage of the... Uh, of the uh, What's the word? The, the turmoil, the picture's going to, the controversy is going to cause. Uh, that's, that was never the case. I never expected to make any money anyway, and that's why I spent so little on it. And the meek, they're the ones who will be blessed. And the suffering, they'll be blessed too. And the peacemakers, and the merciful, and the sick, and the poor, and the outcasts, you'll all be blessed because heaven is yours. <laughs> and believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, those who are laughing now will be crying later. Those whose stomachs are filled now will be hungry later, and the rich will be poor forever. <laughs> was a nightline before a week before the picture opened yeah. and uh when i saw the, the five minute documentary that they showed or a compilation of all these people screaming about the film and i just sat there and it was 11 30 at night and i've been mixing all day and night and i sat there and realized that this picture is gone finished